Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ying Zhang from Texas A&M University. Today, I'm happy to introduce our recent work, Quality Aware Neural Complementary Item Recommendation. So traditional recommendations usually assume user prefer items that are similar with their already bought ones. For example, if a user bought a shirt, it will recommend a similar style shirt. Uh, the recommended item is interchangeable with their already bought ones. So the recommendation is called substitute to the item recommendation. However, in some situations, for example, if I bought a camera or a laptop, is it good enough to recommend similar cameras or laptop? In those situations, users may prefer camera lenses, filters, bags, and other things that may go well with the camera. Such recommendation is called complementary item recommendation. Different from substituted item recommendations that are interchangeable, complementary item recommendations are those that might, might be purchased together. To make it clear, following the definition of complementary item and previous work, we use items that have also bought and bought together two relationships in Amazon data set as the ground truth for the complementary item recommendation. The data set is provided by Dr. McCauley in 2015, and the, uh, the details for the data set please see Dr. McCauley's paper. So, to give a complementary item recommendation, there are several challenges. First, since complementary items vary by the query item, how to define the complementary distance is challenging. Previous work usually used a single source of item information to detect item relationship, but the facts show that they are not good enough for complementary item recommendation. Second, we probably can find the nearest complementary items. However, in practice, users may prefer high quality complementary items rather than the nearest ones. So, how to balance the quality and the complementary relationship is also a problem. Third, based on the previous example, we can find that item different informations are complicated interactive with each other. So how to model those complex interaction is also a problem. Based on the three challenges, we proposed our neural complementary item recommendation, ENCORE, which have three phases. First, it utilizes item different sources information to detect complementary items. Then, we, use, uh, we estimate the quality of the items based on their ratings and incorporate with the complementary distance in the first step. Third, we proposed a multimodal neural network that can model those inter uh, interactions between item information in the complementary relationship. So, for the first step, Previous, a, previous exam, a previous work already shows that like, visual information is an important role for the complementary items. However, in some situations, for example, if I bought a Mac Pro, can anyone tell that A, B, C, D, which one is compatible with the Mac Pro just based on their images? It's hard to find, right? Now I give you some textual information. We are easier to say that A, B, D are complement with the uh, Mac Pro. So complementary relationship between item is influenced by item style and a function, and this influence varies by items. Based on that, we proposed a style-based and a functional-based complements by using embedding method. Here, MI and TI are the image vector and textual vector for the product I, EM and ET are the learned embedding matrices. So based on the first step, we probably can find the nearest complementary items. However, in practice, users may prefer high quality ones rather than the nearest ones. For example, A, B, C are three pants that are compatible with our query item, Bella Lady Hoodie. A and B is the nearest complementary item by step one because they are from the same fashion line as our query item, Bella Lady Hoodie. However, the, Euro, the user's actual choice is, say, another brand of pants which is more distant from our query item. But we look at their rating distributions. Here we can find that the 
uh, the pants uh, of C is higher rated than the A and B. So users may not choose the nearest complementary item, but the highest quality complementary items. Based on that, we proposed uh, uh, to use BEC information to estimate the item quality, which considered both the dis rating distribution and the number of ratings for the item. Details, please see the paper. So from the first two steps, we can find the item textual variable and the quality information are interactive with uh, each other in the complementary relationship. And they vary by items and category. So complementary items recommendation is influenced by the complex interactions of item variable, textual, and uh, quality information. Based on that, we proposed our neural network model, NCOR, uh, which is look that, like that. In the middle is our query items. On the left-hand side and right-hand side are uh, two candidates that might be compatible with uh, the query item. The output will be the probability that uh, item will be compatible with the query item. So in the experiment part, we mainly address two questions. First, how well does NCOR perform versus baselines? Second, what impact do the design choice of NCOR have? For example, does the neural network improve a lot across different categories? The data set we use is 60 different categories in Amazon data set, as we mentioned before. So for the baselines, here we need to notice that we adapt each baseline set to consider the same input as our model and core for fair comparison. So for each baseline, they all consider about viral textual and uh, rating information. We also apply different variations of NCOR to show our model effectiveness. The metrics here we use is accuracy and precision at top K. Here is a part of the result. On the left hand side is also about relationship and on the right hand side is about together relationship. Uh, uh, here we can say NCOR outperforms the other method in most situations but in some situations, for example, for the cell phones and accessory in bought together relationship, NCOR does not perform as good as the other method. It's probably because uh, in bought together relationship, uh, the matrix is very sparse. Uh, for example, for each item, they only have two bought together items um, on average. But in other situations, for example, for the cell phones and accessory, electronics, data set for the also about relationship, Anchor performs much better than the art state of the art method. Here is some case studies uh, for Anchor recommendation. On the left hand side is the query items, and on the right hand side is the, some recommended items by Anchor. Here we can see for different query items, Anchor can give a reasonable um, a product that are complements with the query items. For example, it can recommend the corresponding cases for the query item iPad Air and uh, iPhone 5. So for conclusions, complementary relationships vary for different items and categories. So item variable and textual information are the two important information to detect the complementary items. We can use embedding method to find those complementary distance. Second, in practice, users may prefer high quality complementary right, uh, items rather than the nearest ones. So we can use BNC information to estimate the item quality and then incorporate with the complementary distance in the first step. Uh, third, uh, from the experiment part, we can find that neural network structure uh, can provide improvement for the performance of the uh, complementary item recommendation across different categories. For the future work, we are interested in the personalized uh, complementary recommendation. We are also interested in to build a more effective a uh, model that can utilize textual information from the item to give a higher quality recommendation of the complementary items. That's all, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, Joe Constan, University of Minnesota. 
I guess I was waiting for you to tell me what it is about all this elaborate mechanism that's better than just mining the co-purchase data that any retailer already has to understand what these complementary items are. And at the end, what you said was, well, you used that to check this, but it wasn't a, a baseline. So do you have some explanation for us as to why you think going through all these steps would give you us different and better results than just processing the things people buy together already and assuming that if we find the right frequencies of buying together, they're naturally complementary? OK, thank you for your question. Like, uh, first, like we want to use this method is because uh, if we only based on the uh, data itself, we only can recommend it like uh, the people that bought this item we based on their histories and uh, recommended the other items that are compatible with the ones. But uh, if we can use the uh, our model, like if we have the uh, items, the products, viral texture and rating information, we can recommend the new item to this uh, to this uh, product. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, thank you for the talk. Um, so I'm curious about the data you're using because this is very dependent on you having good exposure to various things. So what do you do to ensure that you're not just being biased by whatever the people have been exposed to, so like by the model that's been used to generate the data here? Uh, sorry, could you repeat it? Um, yeah, so, so the data here, how do you ensure that it's not biased by the model or the, the system that was used to to expose them to various things. Going to the, the question that was just given before, you talked about how the history is very dependent, so has the data you're using been exposed to some uh, randomization scheme, or, or what do you do to kind of overcome that, that challenge? So like, uh, from my understanding, your question is like how to overcome the, whether the data is biased or not? for the complementary relationship. So like for the data set, we first dig into the data set to uh, you, uh, randomly select several data set to look what is actually have like for the also bought and bought together relationships. And we can see most of the situations like the two items are complementary with each other, but there are also some noisy data. So we build the recommend uh, we, we build the neural network to ensure that our neural network is stable enough to for the noisy data. Second, like uh, we also did some case studies for our recommendation results, and uh, the result shows like uh, the recommended uh, uh, the recommended product is complements with uh, already bought ones, and we also compare it with our recommended things and the uh, ground truth to say what's the difference from that. And uh, we find that that most are similar, and based because of the accuracy is uh, high. So I think uh, that's the thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Kurosh from Shopify. Um, you mentioned that you have complementary information based on the like image similarity or text similarity. And you showed an example that you had a shirt and pants. But um, what I guess is that if you use text or image similarity, usually what is returned is substitutes. Like if you have textual or image similarity, if there's a shirt, usually that shirt looks like other shirts. So if the image similarity is being applied, the other shirts, which are substitutions, are gonna be displayed, not complementary information. So no pants gonna be displayed. Usually other shirts gonna be displayed. Oh. So how do, you, how, how do you say that like the image and text similarity are returning the complementary? Um, recommendations? Uh, yeah, like uh, here we use embedding. So if we want to uh, explore the similarity of give some similar shirts, like with the already bought shirt, we can use some similarity method like cosine similarity and piercing similarity. However, our question is complementary recommendation. So we use embeddings to train the features that to, be, to make them to, in the complementary 
space that they are close to each other. Yeah. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you consider the quality of the complementary item, mm -hmm. um, and you know that users usually uh, want high quality item. Prefer? Um, did you check this assumption that uh, users always really prefer high quality items, uh, even if they're like uh, cost more or so? Yeah, that's a very good question. Like we first like look at the like randomly sampled data from our data set and uh, look at their distrib uh, rating distributions. We find that most of that is high, highly distributed, but uh, than the average. But we not uh, actually compare it with the other product uh, to say whether their rating distributions is high. But we con conduct uh, some experiments that. Uh, only consider image and textual information, and also a model that consider both textual and visual and rating informations. It shows the accuracy is higher, and uh, we look at the uh, uh, the predictions, and we find it's uh, matches to the ground truth of the data. That's all. One more question. Hello. Hi. Uh, when you define the embeddings on images and words, you use a triplet loss, uh, a, triplet, a triplet loss as metric. Okay, so your question about the objective function that we use? Yeah. Yeah, we use the maximal likelihood function, which is similar with the previous work. You can check from the, uh, our paper, like we want to uh, the high probability that our, our observed data are prepared for the complementary, complementary relationship. Okay. okay, let's thank the speaker. Thank you.